So, uh, welcome to the behind the scenes. Uh, this uh, audio quality is um, great, and uh, yeah. So to start off, this was a History Day project. If you don't know what History Day is, it's basically the science fair, but for history. You make a project, and you turn it in, and you can, you know, go into the finals, and district, and go into county, and the nationals. It's basically science fair, but for history. And for my teacher, she wanted us to do it for a grade. So for History Day, you can do either a documentary, a website, a paper, a exhibit, and a play or performance. And of course I chose to do the documentary because, you know, good at video editing and stuff. But if you watch other people's History Day documentaries, they're really bland and, well, boring. They're normally just moving pictures and, you know, voiceovers. And that's what a National History Day documentary is. Just moving pictures. Here's the national winners, they, it's just moving pictures. And this project focuses mainly on the content instead of the video. But I wanted to do something different. I wanted this documentary to be entertaining, like a real documentary. I wanted it to be engaging, fun to watch, and, you know, it'll teach you something. So though I didn't have to make a stop motion of the documentary, I did it anyways, even though it wouldn't boost my grade. And I did it mainly because... I like filming and also for YouTube. So I made this stop motion just for you guys so you know, yeah. And my other History Day documentary is a D-Day one that most of you have seen. So back to the behind the scenes. This is the behind the scenes of the History Day project I made, The Battle of the Bulge. And if you haven't watched The Battle of the Bulge documentary, you can check it out in the description below. This is a video that I was really proud of and I worked really hard on it. As you can see in this video, the frame rate was a lot better, the effects were 10 times better, basically the whole quality of the video was a lot better. And when I checked the comments of the documentary, I saw a lot of people asking a lot of questions, so this will be the explainer video for the documentary. The first thing I'll say is the frame rate. The frame rate is only 10 frames per second. Most stop motion YouTubers would go for 12, but 10 is an even number and I didn't really want to do math, so... And another question I got was how long did this take? So the teacher assigned History Day about two months before it was due. So beforehand I had to do some research and wrote the script. Then on September 23rd I actually started filming the first scene. So basically I filmed this whole stop motion in the span of two weeks because this was due on the 7th of December. So yeah, this uh, whole entire video was filmed in about two weeks, and it wasn't just easy going. I had to work all day and stay up till like one on most days. I kind of procrastinated. And the final question I get the most is how do I make my effects? And if I get enough requests to do a effect tutorial video, I would. But the main rundown is that I use Premiere and After Effects for explosions. And for how I make my muzzle flashes, I use this program called Paint.net where I edit every single frame where I want to have the, the muzzle flash and I just add it manually like this. And the reason I do this instead of using Premiere or After Effects is because After Effects and Premiere are really laggy, so if I do add like thousands of muzzle flashes, it would take forever. And second of all, the method I use is pretty easy to do and it turns out good results. And I'll probably do a tutorial on that too. So there are your questions answered. Now on how I made the video. So as I said, filming was started on September 23rd. But before that, I had to make the set. And I got a lot of questions about that too. The set was made on this old train table I had. And I used this train table because it had borders around it. So the materials inside wouldn't fall out and dirty my room. But I first covered the table with paper so that no materials would seep through the wood. A lot of people asked me what I used for the snow and it's pretty obvious it's clearly cocaine. I'm just joking but it's actually flour. Flour is your best bet for filming in the snow. Real snow is well cold and a really big hassle to film in because it melts, it's unpredictable, and it's just really uncomfortable sitting down in the snow filming. 
So I just got five pounds of flour and dumped it on the table. For the trees, I'll make a tree tutorial video soon. I already have the thumbnail and I already have the footage, I just have to edit it. So if you want to know how to make these gorgeous trees, it'll be out soon. The first scene was one of the hardest scenes to film. I had to build a really low budget rig and I had to move a lot of items across the scene. As you can see I used a microphone pole and a bunch of Legos and tape to film the scene. Low budget at its finest. In this film, I think I used almost all of my World War II tanks, and you can see them in various scenes. For various parts of the video, I added in this fake camera movement shake that enhances the video. Many of the scenes in the documentary are just still images because I couldn't film that many scenes in two weeks. So instead of putting a still image into the background, I added in some snow falling, maybe some camera shake, and some color correction. And you can really tell the difference. The D-Day scene was the only reused scene in the whole entire film. And this was mainly because I didn't want to set up another D-Day set just for a 2 second clip. Now I filmed various scenes relating to the voiceover I did. For the film I also made this German headquarters and this Allied headquarters. And uh, for some reason I decided to make the Allied headquarters floating in midair. So, someone asked me about the equipment I used, so here it is, so this is my computer and for some reason every time I boot it up or turn on the screen, when the screen turns on, it flashes like this, so this is what I'm working with, right? The program I use to make the videos are Premiere and Movie Maker. Movie Maker is used to put all the video, is to make the stop motion a stop motion. Premiere is to add to the effects and I have After Effects too for other things. The camera I use is this piece of crap. Um, if you turn it on, you know, there's a huge hole in it. Also, the lenses are kind of stuck. That's why you can see them. Now I want to talk about Premiere. So I have a lot of friends that make army men stop motions. And I also know a lot of you do the same. And I know a lot of you use phones to film your stop motion. And I used to do that too, four years ago. But one day you're going to learn that filming a stop motion on a device that fits in your pocket doesn't always work out well. The iPhone is just a computer and it has a lot of limitations. In order to make a really good stop motion, you're going to have to combine a bunch of devices, a computer, a microphone, a camera, you need all of them. But I'm not saying that you can't use your phone to make stop motions, just that if you want to take it to the next level, you're going to have to use a computer. So that brings me to my point. I started using Premiere and Premiere has this really, really nifty tool called the Warp Stabilizer. The Warp Stabilizer is basically a preset that you can drag onto your video and Premiere will automatically turn it into a stabilized piece of footage. It will do this by tracking your footage and warping and positioning it to make it smooth. Here's the difference between clips. And this was a really helpful tool in the stop motion. It made everything look a lot nicer and it made it have the camera move a tiny bit which gave it some realism. And this is a really helpful tool if you don't have a really good tripod or really level environments or some stuff, I don't know. This warp stabilizer is really good. Next I had to film all the scenes and put the documentary together. The nuts scene was really easy to make. 
and in my opinion it was really funny but I didn't see anyone comment about it. But if you wanted to know, the nuts came from Band of Brothers where the guy reads out a letter and you know he had this scene with nuts. Now after this scene, something bad happened. So my camera fell into the flower and I thought oh it's no biggie so I picked it back up. But then I realized that the camera had some dirty marks on it so I tried wiping the lens but I soon realized that there was flour inside the camera and that's why you have this horrible camera quality and if I want to make any more stop motions I'm probably gonna have to get a new camera so hope on that guys so it's 9 16 and look at that look at that it's December 6th it's December 6th and you know what that means the project is due tomorrow and I only finished six minutes of the documentary, as you can see on Premiere. No, I can't. Oh, yeah, there you go. Six sixteen. And uh, someone's texting me. But what the? What? What are you doing? Oh my God! <laughs> Shout out to these magnificent people right here. Yep, great. You know, I just. Oh my dear god. Like, today's Thursday and it's due on Friday. I made the King Tiger today and it's 9 and I'm barely done. I'm probably gonna have to stay up till 2 to finish this. So on Thursday, I ended up staying up till 4 a.m. And then I went to sleep for about an hour and woke up at 5 a.m. and kept working. So basically, that whole night I only got a 1 hour of sleep. Procrastination at its finest. Then I uploaded the video and everything was done, except that I had three more projects to do. Anyways, let's talk about the stop motioning stuff. So for the tanks, the new tanks in there are the Panzer IV, the King Tiger, and the BT-7. And I also had this quick scene with the Spitfire, which I'll have a how-to video soon. Many people have pointed this out, but I did make the Panzer IV from Girls on Panza, and the reason I made it was cuz I was bored so yeah I also used a lot of 3d printed soldiers in the film overall I think this is my best stop motion yet and although it's not that engaging because it's a documentary I learned a lot from making the stop motion and I'll probably make something really big soon so thank you all for watching this behind the scenes and yeah